but today's workout has got racing in mind. Um, everyone's gearing up and getting ready to head to nationals here. Um, and whether you might be watching this right now with a couple of days before you fly out or in the future before a race meet that you've got ready to go. Um, this session is going to focus on doing things for your legs that, that um, activate them, that are a little bit explosive, um, a little bit unlike some of our other workouts. It's going to be a little bit shorter in total, so it's not quite as fatiguing overall. And there's also going to be a little bit more of a break between exercises, so that gives you an opportunity to be completely recovered between each thing. We're going to be doing things, um, most of the exercises are going to be quite fast and quite powerful, which is what your legs need at this point. Um, and there's not a lot of benefit from working those fast twitch, high CNS activation exercises if we're fatigued. So we don't want to let too much fatigue come in during this session. As always, we need a really good warm up and make sure that we're mobile and that our body's ready to come to the party. Um, so we're going to get straight into that with a varied but a little bit shorter warm up. Um, to match a session that's a little bit shorter on total workload as well. So let's get straight into it. We're just going to start jogging on the spot just with a light toe touch behind. We're not using our toes to press into the floor. We're just bouncing off our forefoot and a really light touch out behind. Now we're going to switch that to a light touch out to the side, making sure our feet stay straight. So we don't want to see the inside of our shoe like this. We don't want it opening up. We're going to keep them nice and straight and alongside us. Going to switch again, still using the forefoot, but quickly doing a light touch with the heel on the floor out in front of us. Come around again to normal jogging. So we're just touching that light touch out the back again. And we're going to introduce some touch downs. So we're jogging along and touch, jog and touch the other side. Trying to get our hips really low to the ground. So it's not leaning our upper body down and reaching for the floor. It's using our legs to lower our hips to get us low enough that our arms just naturally there. All right, let's go back to front on. We're going to do some crossovers on the spot now. And that action is to pick it up, put it down, cross over it, pick it up and come open again. Now we lead with an up, down, cross over and replace. Okay, we're gonna head this way, like so, just follow this pattern. Just one crossover in each direction and then springing off the outside foot to change direction. Everything stays facing where we'd wanna go. Feet always facing forwards. Five, four, three, two, one, and done. Good job. So we're gonna go into some lunge to twist now. That's where we're going to step forward into a lunge position and then twist towards the side that we've got the leg forward. So if I've got my right leg forward, I twist to the right like I'm gonna to touch a wall, twist back and push myself up. We step out to the left and twist left, twist back and stand up. So from the side, they look like this, follow along with me now. So we're gonna step out, twist, back, out with the left, twist left and back. Out to the right, twist right and back. Out to the left, twist left and back. We're gonna go overhead now. So it's a still, it's the lunge out. As we lunge out, we're going to bring our arms up above our head and then we're going to lean away 
or we're going to lean towards the side with the leg out the front. So I'm going to lunge out with my right leg and I'm going to lean to my right to give my left side a nice long stretch. I'm going to stretch it back, push up, out with the left, and I lean to my left and back. Up, out to the right, lean to the right, and up, out to the left, lean to the left, and up, two more, out to the right, lean to the right, and up, out to the left, lean to the left, and up, good job. So we're gonna do some leg swings now, first to mobilize, and then to get some driving mobility out of the hip joint. So front to back to start with, so balancing on one leg, and we're swinging nice and freely for eight times. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're going to change legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Out to the side now. So we're going to out to the side and then across the body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And changing legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. We're going to drive those now. So without the swing back to start, we're going to drive from a steady position, drive that leg up and really control the trip back down, not let it fly up and fall down. We're going to drive it up, let it control it down, bring it to a stop again for four times each side. So starting with my right leg, I'm going to drive it up, control it back, drive it up, control it back. Three and four. When it gets to its highest position, you should be able to keep it there for a moment before you bring it back down. And that shows we're not bouncing off the top. That's so real control and strength at the hip we're looking for. Here we go on the left side up and back to a stop. Two, three. And four. All right, well done. Inchworm now. <clears throat> so we're going to move to one side of our space. We're going to tuck our chin, roll our shoulders, and shrink down till we've got our fingertips on the floor and walk them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, till we're in a plank, but it's elongated. Our hands are out in front, walking it back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can go continuously if you've got more space, but just shuffle yourself around if you don't. We go again. So we're outstretched and walk it back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uncurl. All right, moving on to the floor now. We're going to go face down for the scorpion twist. So arms are by our side or fold it up with your hands under your chin if you need that. We're lying out prone, our feet are slightly separated. We're gonna pick up the right heel, curl it up, lift the knee and twist over like we're trying to touch, almost touch my opposite elbow on the floor. We're gonna let that come back and roll out. We're gonna do the same with the left. So heel up, knee up, roll it over, reach as far as you can and touch the floor. Roll it back, unroll it, and stretch out. Two more each side. Here we go. Right side, up, curl, and over. Left side, up, curl, and over. Two more. Right side, up, curl, and over. And out. Left side, up, curl, and over to touch. And back we go. Good job. Bringing it up, let's keep those hips 
getting opened up every which way. So a little bit of hurdle walking, moving over to one side of your space. Here we go. So over one hurdle, under the next one by sliding really low, hips close to the floor, head and shoulders notably higher than the hips. And we come up, hurdle over, hurdle under. And back this way, hurdle over, hurdle under, over and under. Good job. Okay, gonna pivot at the hip now with a bit more control and controlled pace. So straight body, we've got a broken set of knees. I'm gonna balance on my left knee. I'm gonna let my right foot be free just off the ground. I'm gonna let my arms hang and I'm going to pivot at the hip, keeping the knee bend on the supporting leg until I'm outstretched. And then I'm gonna slowly pivot back and not put the foot back on the ground, still balancing. And again, pivot until I'm outstretched. Slowly pivot back, but don't put the foot on the ground. Last one. Pivot, you're outstretched, slowly pivoting back. And now we can put the foot down. We're gonna change sides, here we go. So broken knee on the right leg, free leg on the left, and we're gonna pivot, let our arms hang, outstretch that body, slowly pivot back until we're aligned again. Pivot out, stretch it out, maintain that knee bend in the supporting leg, pivot back. And third time lucky, pivot out. And pivot back. Good job. Okay, onto the arms now, just a little bit of work to free up the arms and shoulders get them ready to work. So some arm hugs, palms are open, thumbs up. We hug ourselves, hug ourselves the opposite way. Open and shut, open the chest right up, close it right off. So shoulders are definitely getting moved forward and back as well. Taking the wingspan right out there. Let's go over the top now, opposite arm action. So full circles right through the range. Three, four, and back the other way. One, two, three, four. Let's come down into the skating position. Now we're gonna practice some arm swing with a rapid acceleration from a low speed. When we wanna do that, we want our arms to move quickly. So we're gonna keep the break in the elbow. So that arm swing is gonna look like this one. So practicing that swing, keeping the body nice and still. I've got my hips tucked underneath me. A little bit of tension in my lower abs to keep my body still while I swing. All right, we're gonna come up. When we go down again, it's gonna be for a full arm swing. And we're gonna move from pose to pose with this. So a front pose has got the arm across the body definitely across the body line and the rear arm is extended and high and you can almost spot an alignment through the arm the trailing arm and into the forearm like so and then we swing them through they pass our shins together and they come up to the other pose we've got our little finger is at the highest at the back our thumbs at the highest at the front here we go and you want to be swinging smoothly from pose to pose without it throwing your body around. Hips tucked underneath and a little bit of tension in the lower abdominals or the pelvic floor. So we don't turn our body into a noodle while we're trying to skate powerfully. Three, two, one, and done. Good job. All right, that's our warm up. Give things a bit of a shake out. Take this opportunity to take a quick drink. Okay, so moving on to the workout for this session, 
Um, so we're going to go through seven different exercises. Some of them will have some repeats and, and some won't. So as I said, this is a pre-racing type of off-skate session. You might not necessarily want it to do it the day before racing or the day before you travel or the day of travel, I should say. But um, if you're a couple of days out and looking for something to really get the legs tuned up and uh, not have a lot of residual fatigue coming away from it, um, this is a good go-to workout to get you primed before you're ready to race. So we're going to be doing some vibrations. We're going to be doing some um, static uh, start hops to simulate a component of the standing start. We're going to be working on the rapid recovery of the skate back underneath the body. We're going to do some dynamic leg switches. We're going to be doing some dynamic bench springs. Um, and if you've got a step you want to work with for that or a block that you want to be jumping on and off, um, have that handy. Uh, if you're watching this on video later, you might want to pause it and go and find that and, and bring it up where you can use it shortly. We're going to do some low circles as just a short technical break. And then we're going to finish with some skate jumps at the end. Plenty of recovery put in between things um, so that we're not starting anything fatigued. We're just not getting that power activation if we're coming into it for, with fatigue. And we also don't want a lot of residual fatigue from this session that you're still trying to recover from when you're getting really close to race time. You don't need that to think about. All right, so vibrations we're going to get into to start with. So it's going to be five seconds at a time. The trick with vibrations is to get your body into a partial skating position. And we're going to hold our body as static and smooth as we can and work our legs like a jackhammer underneath us. So the idea is to be able to get your feet up and down by about an inch underneath you, like so, while keeping your upper body really relaxed and still. So they're going to be just five-second bouts. And when we get to the end of the five seconds, that last finishing manoeuvre is you doing a vertical jump. So springing up as powerfully as you can off the last vibration. Okay, so what they're going to look like is five seconds of this and the final to spring out of it. And then we're going to shake it off and recover in between. Four sets of five seconds. Let's get ready to go. Here we go. Setting yourselves up. I'll give you a countdown to the first one. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Go. And we'll shake that out. So just letting your legs recover. You're going to have a rapid acceleration in your heart rate with these. That's going to come after the finish of that five seconds. So you'll need a little bit of time to just breathe nice and relaxed. Help bring your heart rate down a little bit and let you get ready to focus on correct, fast execution of the next one. I'll count us into the next one and I'll count us down so you can get ready for that finishing jump. As I said, there's going to be nice long recoveries between things. So you're going to feel ready to go with a, with a good performance on every single bout of every single exercise. All right, here we go. Getting ready for our count in. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Four, three, two, one, go. Good job. That's two. Two out of the four that we're going to do. And just let yourself relax, shake it out. It's a real exercise in managing a highly explosive repetitive action with the lower part of your body while keeping a, holding your posture still and relaxed with the upper part of your body. So there's a lot of relevance there to when we're skating and we're trying to skate hard or accelerate quickly to be able to keep the position that helps us that helps us get leverage, the thing that we're pushing off, which is only our body, we've got nothing to hold on to, to be able to keep that still and stable so that we can get a lot of power into the ground. Here we go, coming up for number three. Let's get ourselves set. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Four, 
three, two, one, go. And shake that one out. Totally let yourself relax. These types of sessions like sprinting when it comes to tuning up your performance for real power output and correct execution. It's all about having proper recoveries in between things. Um, we don't want to make tonight's session too long because we don't want too much residual fatigue from having to concentrate on a workout with technical components for too much time. But at the same time, we need some generous recoveries in here so that we can perform for each exercise. Here we go for the fourth of four. Setting up. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Four, three, two, one, jump. And shake it out. That's our vibrations done. If it's hot where you are and it's hot where I am, I might take a chance with the recoveries between each type of exercise to grab a quick drink. Always a good idea when you're training, particularly if you're doing hard stuff, maybe that's sprints at practice or high speed intervals at practice or off skate, to be taking little sips of your drink really frequently. Those small small, small sips don't put you in gastric distress, which can make you end up feeling sick or not wanting to drink at all because you're putting a big volume of fluid down into your stomach all in one hit. So it's better to take those small sips of your drink really regularly than it is to wait until you're desperate to have a drink and pile in a big amount. All right, so we're going to use our block or our bench for the next exercise. So if you've got your step to work off, we want you to set that up. And we're going to put it off just ever so slightly in front of us and off to the side. Because what we're going to be doing is getting down into our side starting position and from our side start ready position, I'll give us a countdown. And on the go signal, we're going to hop from this leading leg and hop up onto the box. That's just that single movement. So we're going to be down, tense, and primed to go. And when we hit the right point in our countdown, we're going to explode from that hop up onto our box. If you're not particularly confident about clearing your box and, and, and not snagging your foot on the way up, Make sure you're working with something nice and low. But this is, we're just trying to maximize how explosive you can be off the front leg in that starting movement. Okay, so everything else works the same way. Here we go. We're going to go through and do five of these, but we're going to do them on our preferred starting side. We're also going to do them on our non preferred side. Okay. So we're going to go through the full start setup. In position, set, go. And back down. It's just that single movement and we just wanna be as powerful as we can. And having the step there encourages us to have a target to really activate powerfully, not just I want to move quickly, but because you're aware that you've got to clear the top of the step that you've got there, it's, it's making sure that you get the maximum amount of activation out of that movement. Here we go again. In position, set, go. Give it a shake off, let yourselves relax in between each one and set your mind on exactly what type of activation and what type of movement is necessary to get this done. Here we go. 
Number three of five on this side. In position. Set. Go. And make sure by the time you've dialed in on this a little bit, you probably know exactly where you want that box relative to where you're standing in the starting position. So it feels quite natural to take off from that front leg and that the box is in a position where you're comfortable landing on it. You're not trying to send yourself somewhere different or jump onto something that's too close or too far away in order to get the action. We're just trying to amplify the activation that we get from that leading leg. Here we go. I think this is number four or five. In position. Set. Go. Nice. We'll call that four or five. We've got one to go on this side. And then we're going to do five more for the sake of balance on our non-preferred side. All right. Last one. Five of five. This one for the 500 metre final. In position. Set. Go. Go. All right, nice work. Now we're going to, if you need to, relative to where you're watching from or the space you're working in, you might want to move your box over to one side because we're going to come at it from the other side now. So this is the reverse action. We're going to be starting in a mirror image here. So still in position, set, and the takeoff. And we're going to take off our non-preferred leg with a hop up to the box from that one. Here we go for the first of five. In position. Set. Go. So they're not going to feel quite as coordinated for a lot of people off their non-preferred side. That's totally okay. If you've practiced a 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 start off your left side and now we're working on the right, of course, that's going to feel a little bit unorthodox for you. Here we go. Two of five. In position. Set. Go. Nice. Shake those out. And just keep your mind focused on that starting procedure. Exactly what it is, how you need to align your body to get the most productive start. Making sure you keep your hips side on to the start line. Knowing where, when you get the set position, where you're going to put that rear foot, how far it is from your front foot, how far back or alongside it is to that foot, and just exactly how you're going to use it to be as explosive off the front as you possibly can. Here we go, three of five. In position. Set. Go. Nice. Two to go. In position, set, go. That's four done. We've got one to go. All right, last one. In position. Set. Go. Nice work. Okay. 
We're not going to need the box for our next exercise, so we can take that out of the danger zone. Grab yourselves a quick drink, small sips like we talked about earlier, and we'll move on to our next exercise. So for our next one, it's a little bit of a rest from the powerful dynamic, doesn't involve hopping, doesn't involve jumping. But what it does involve is keeping real control of our posture and position so that we can do, we can take care of quick actions at the skate or at the foot without them interfering with the position that we're in. So we need to be able to push out with a lot of power and keep a small, strong, stable body to lever off of. Similarly, when we want to recover a skate quickly, we want that quick recovery action to be accurate and fast because we can only we can only step as fast as we can get a skate back to use it again. Just how fast we push it out is only one component. If we can't bring it back fast and clean so it lands ready to use, it's no good to us and, and our, our step rate isn't going to be super fast. So what we're going to do is work on our linear recovery. So we're going to be in the skating position. We're going to have our hand, our arms out. We're going to be going from here. We're going to slowly move into the sprint extended position and draw it back quickly without putting it down. We're going to slowly move into the sprint extended position and draw it back quickly. Okay, so we're going to do 30 seconds on each leg. The emphasis is quick and clean return where the, the leg's moving very straight. If we were doing that in front of the camera, we'd be going from here to here, here to here. We're trying to keep our body curled up small and still while we do that. So it's very controlled. All right, so let's set things up. 30 seconds on one side, then 30 seconds on the other. We're gonna start on my right. So we're gonna start on the right with the left out, my arms up, and here we go. Return, slowly extend with control, return. All right, that's it for one side. We don't want to spend too long isolated on one leg in this session because we don't want to develop too much residual fatigue or lactic in one leg. Remember, the real emphasis is on the posture, your skating position being small, curled, hips tucked underneath, and that that position isn't impacted by how quickly we're striding and returning. Okay, let's go. Setting up on our left side now for 30. I'm going to extend out. And here we go. Return. Extend slowly. Return. And done. Um, all right, give the legs a little bit of a shake out. They start tying up ever so slightly when we try and keep them in that static position for that length of time, which is why we're limiting it to that. Grab a quick sip of your drink and we'll move on to our next exercise. So making sure that we're getting recovered enough to perform on these. I'm just going to demo the next one before we actually start it. So we're going to be doing our leg switch exercise. Now in a couple of our previous workouts, 
we've done those one switch at a time by stepping out into the lunge position, driving up to switch midair, and then stepping back. What we're going to do with these ones is we're going to chain them together. We're not going to step back between each. So we'll start in this position and we're going to drive up and switch, drive up and switch, drive up and switch. It's one after the other. So we're working on a soft controlled landing where we use our legs to soak up the ground and not jam to a stop. And immediately we soak up the landing, we explode back upwards so that our legs can switch and pass each other while they're straight. So we want to get enough drive and height of our hips off the ground that when my hips come up and my legs switch, I don't have to have them tucked up underneath me in the air to get them to switch over. I can actually have them straight and have them swing past one another before I come back down onto the ground. So we're just going to go for 10 repetitions. That's all. And then stop. We're going to do two sets of 10 repetitions. Again, staying in the skating position, we want to stay curled up and small, whether we're in the air or on the ground. Okay, another half a minute to recover, and then we'll do the first of our two sets of leg switches. Now, when we keep putting these recoveries in, it does feel a bit different to some of the other sessions that we've done where we're always pushing a different exercise or a contrasting exercise in one after the other so that we can make the most of the time. Right at the moment, when we're trying to get race ready, making the most of the time is really sweating on getting the recoveries right because the recovery is very, very much the key to freshness and freshness on race day is what's going to allow you to be really responsive, really fast. And particularly when it comes to starting, sprinting and accelerations, you want to be really sharp. You've got to be fresh to be sharp. Okay, here we go. Let's set this one up. 10 repetitions is all that we'll do. That's 10 switches in total. Let's make them good quality. So setting up, we're in the sprint position down. Three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Leave it at ten. Don't try and push into more and let yourself recover. This is going to be one where your heart rate keeps climbing after you finish. And it's right after you finish that your breathing starts to become difficult, particularly if you're talking during it like me. But we want to just go with that. Stay relaxed. Don't try and gasp or force it but let yourself relax, get that air in and recover before we go again. So 10 reps doesn't seem like a lot when we do this exercise, but it's a highly dynamic one because every single movement is effectively a drop jump. So those jumps are rebound every time we're going to full depth. We're right down at 90 degree angles when we try and take off from the floor. So there's a lot of concentric and isometric muscle action to bring you, decelerate you as you come to the ground and bring you to a stop. And then eccentric, um, concentric contractions, I should say, to drive you up off the floor. And your legs have got to switch between those really dynamically under a whole lot of load the whole time. They get minor, minor recoveries while they're in the air not unlike while we're recovering the skate and sprinting hard. All right, so we're going to go again. This is going to be another 10 repetitions. So let's set it up. If you can remember which leg you had out front last time, you might want to start out on a different one this time around. Here we go. Set up. We've got our sprint arm pose ready to go. And drive. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. Nice and demanding those. Again, let yourselves stay calm. 
get the air in slowly and just let yourself recover. That's two sets, about 10 leg switches. And we'll be moving on to another exercise again after that. So if you can breathe comfortably enough to grab a drink, this is probably a good time to take another sip. So with our next exercise, we're gonna do the bench spring. We're gonna go only for 20 seconds. Now, when we've been doing bench springs and some of our other off skate workouts, we've gone 30 seconds continuous out to a minute continuous. These ones, we wanna be nice and powerful, deliberately explosive off the lead leg every time. Now the bench spring to remind you, if we're not using the bench or the block, which I'm gonna bring out for myself in a moment, if we're not using that, we're on the ground, we use the lead leg to spring across and then land on the opposite. And then we use the, that leg. So always using the lead leg, like we're initiating a crossover, but we're not gonna complete that crossover each time. Okay, if we're using the bench or the box, that's gonna work a little bit differently. With the box, if you choose to use it, it's gonna work like this. So you've got one foot up on the box. We're trying to keep our hips level, not let the leg that's up on the box have its hip elevated too much. And we're gonna drive off this leg to go. Staying in the skating position while we're in the air, okay? If you're using the box, try not to do it in a way that's got you stepping forward onto it. We wanna be aligned up alongside it and that with the foot up, you'll see that my hips, I'm not putting my foot up and tipping my hip over to get up there. I'm putting my foot up and trying to stay level and work that real depth off that leg to explode up and over, land, control the landing on this leg right before exploding off this leg again, okay? So whichever variation you're choosing to use, here we go for two by 20 seconds. We're gonna start in 20. In 10. Five, four, three, two, one, off we go. Ten seconds to go. And done. Nice job. Let yourself shake those there. Again, heart rate's gonna keep climbing. You catch up with the workload, it's always working on a delay and your breathing's gonna start getting at its heaviest right about now. But just relax. Use those known familiar movements that you use to keep yourselves supple and relaxed. Start employing those while you relax your breathing to recover. So those movements for me are kicking back towards the butt, stretching out the thigh because I'm keeping the knee down while I do it, rocking side to side to let that happen, breathing easy, doing the same up the front, elevating the knee if my shorts weren't so sticky, to stretch the backside and then shaking the water off just to make sure I've got those muscles flopping around the bone as loose and relaxed as I can get them before we go into our second set. Get rid of my pop-up here. Okay. Okay, second set now, we might wanna start on an alternate leg if you were using the box or using the floor. 
if you've got if you knew what your starting leg was let's start on the other side this time we're going to start in 10 seconds for 20 seconds here we go five four three two one let's go Ten seconds to go. Three, two, one, and done. Good job. Give yourselves that opportunity to recover. Shake it out. Walk it off if you need. We've got one technical exercise coming up next. That'll be a bit of a break from the dynamic stuff. Again, give our muscle fibers that little bit longer to recover before we do our final dynamic exercise. Not gonna need the box again. So we'll get that out of the workspace or the pain cave or whatever you call your workout area right now, or the sweat box if you're in your garage in summer. And just letting yourself bring the heart rate back down and relax the breathing a little. So our next exercise is going to be our low circles. So that's where we're down in the skating position, isolated in that position, we're going to stay there. We're going to sweep a push directly out to the side, close to the floor, recover it, bring it back in to the zone where we push it out again. We're going to do 30 seconds on one side and then 30 seconds on the other side. Focus on keeping that skating position curled up, small and very still. Okay. So hips, once we get down there, they're not turned up to the sky. They're tucked underneath. We're pulling the pelvic floor a little so that we could almost just rest our arm in there without pinching it. That gives our legs room to move and recover, helps with full hip mobility. And our back has got a gentle curve in the lower back. So we're not making it tired by trying to keep it straight, which is going to have us on skates, trying to stretch it out and stop it from seizing up all the time. All right, I'm going to start on my right leg in 15 seconds. This will be 30 seconds of continuous push and sweep recover on the left side. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And once you've got your position, let's go. It's 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're done. Let's switch over straight away and head into the other side. All the movements slow and controlled. There's no part faster than the other. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're done. Up we come. Good job. A little bit of a break from the dynamic stuff there. Still working on controlling that small, steady skating position while we complete the action with our legs and stay still the whole time. Let's recover that. We've got one final exercise to do. We're going to go two sets of just 10 jumps. We're going to be doing our skate jumps. So that being the regular skate jump, loaded, jumping to land and control. Okay, so it's going to be two sets of just 10 jumps with plenty of recovery in between. So changing exercises again. Let's take another sip of the drink. And these will be our final two sets 
of the program. Still trying to bring our breathing into a really relaxed state. Let the heart rate come down. Let the legs recover. Getting strangled by a heart rate monitor in this hot weather. Okay, here we go. Pick a side that you want to start on. We're going to start on one leg and for the second set, we'll start on the opposite. In five, Four, three, two, one, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, that's our one set. Nice and relaxed again. Shaking it out and recovering fully before we go for our final set. That last set again, gonna be just 10 jumps. Remember, we're going to start off the opposite leg. So if you keyed off from your right side on your right leg, getting set over in the other side of your space for our final set of 10 jumps. Starting in 10. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and done. Nice work. Letting that recover again. Just easing it down. All the efforts in this workout are short intense and focus with plenty of time to compose ourselves and recover fully in between each. That's what we need right before race meets, before a big performance. Those tune up type exercises really get the central nervous system firing, muscles ready to fire, but not enough specific fatigue per exercise or residual fatigue from the whole workout to be struggling to recover in time to be fresh and ready to go on race day. So that's a wrap for this one. Remember your recovery protocols from these and a big part of particularly if this is one of the last workouts that you're going to do before you go racing, make sure you cool down well. So don't waste too much time between finishing your last bout of exercise and your cool down. I'm going to be headed outside to jog for three to five minutes. For me, that's just doing one or two laps of the block where my house is and then coming back inside. Once I've done that, bit of jogging, I'm going to come inside and do some stretching. I'm going to use a timer on my watch or a timer on my phone. Um, and depending on what kind of stretching I feel like my legs need, either 90 seconds on the timer or three minutes on the timer to um, settle into each individual stretch. To go through all of the stretches or the, at least all of the key stretches that I know to stretch the major muscles that we've been working here and for a long, a reasonable stretch, 90 seconds or a particularly long one of three minutes a piece and just relax into those. Let the muscles relax as you stretch them and you'll find you get a little bit more depth with time as you go. Remember to fuel and continue to hydrate. If you've been sweating your way through this workout and you might've gone through half a bottle or a bottle during, you probably need to be drinking around about that much again over the course of the next 30 minutes to an hour to make sure that you've, um, that you've made up for what you lost and you've stayed well hydrated to help your muscles recover as well. 
And of course, fueling, it's 20 minutes after a uh, workout effort that is a key window to get your fuel in. So if you're gonna do some eating, whether it's your next meal or your post-workout snack, make sure you get that in within 20 minutes. So sometimes it helps to go from here, go for your jog, come back from your jog, start getting some of that food in and you can be eating it while stretching. So that's it for another workout and a good one to prime you for races. And we'll see you for another one shortly.